Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Did you know that Prismatic Arc Warlock has been highly overlooked by players in Destiny 2? If you would ask your friends which Prismatic subclass they mean most, they would definitely say Song of Flame, right? And while our Arc subclass does suck in any game, it doesn't mean we can't use it, right? Well, today's video, I'm going to show you a build that will make our super worth the investment, but also show us a rapid ability cooldown increased damage reduction and weapon damage, tons of arc explosion and more when simply using Crown of Tempers and Centrifuge. Let's get started. So start with the general aim and the Zotic of the build, our aim is to showcase how powerful the arc subclass on the prismatic side of things has become with the new seasonal mods. I'll also showcase the best setup that everyone can adapt to. For this, we will be using Crown of Tempers and Centrifuge. To start with Azotic Armor, Crown of Tempest, with its Azotic Effect, Conduction Tines, it states, Arc Ability, or Jolt Ability Finder Blows, increase the recharge rate of our Arc Abilities, and extend the duration of Storm Trance. Although Storm Trance is terrible to use in in-game because of how weak it is, the extended duration's buff will be helpful when facing the onslaught of enemies we'll face. Crown of Tempest can provide us up to a 502.5% ability regen upon activation. And for this to be achieved, we can use Shock and R and Fast or Dominance with Storm Grenades to achieve this. These two will be the primers of the build and will allow us to maintain the high attrition rate the build is designed to do. On top of that, this can work with any arc weapon as long as you are triggering the Shock and R special effect. This is only going to be possible this season so generally don't miss out while you still can. Our second exotic is the Centrifuge with its exotic effect, Overcharge Capacitor. Which states, sprinting, sliding, and firing this weapon builds a temporary electrostatic charge, increasing range and reload speed. Final blows with high charge cause explosions, and maximum charge explosion blind targets. The centrifuge is a powerful weapon once you get its overcharge feature going, as just the ability to cause explosion and blind targets can go a long way. I have added the sustained fire and targeting auto loading seasonal mods to the build as this will increase our auto rifles effectiveness and the build effectiveness by a large amount. Sustained fire will be giving us an increased damage reduction while shooting, which is great for reaching max overcharge with centrifuge. A targeting auto loading will of course be providing a damage buff upon netting kills and also auto reloading our weapon which is ideal for centrifuge. You can use any other arc weapon you like as centrifuge isn't a must have but overlooking what it does, it makes perfect sense for the build. I can also see Wrist Runner being useful here as well, but only if you're facing arc enemies or if you can proc its effects as well. For the aspects and fragments, we then have the following. Feed the Void, where defeating a target with an ability, will grant you Devour. Helion, where activating your class ability, will produce a solar mortar that lobs flaming projectiles that scorches targets. A fast or dominance, where your Void grenades weaken targets, and your arc grenades jolt targets. A fast sort of coverage where arc, solar and void abilities deal increased damage to targets inflicted with darkness debuffs. A fast sort of sacrifice where while having an arc, solar or void buff, a final blows will grant you bonus darkness transcendence energy. A fast sort of balance where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities will grant you melee energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants grenade energy. And a fast sort of hope well, while having an element of buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. Now, since Crown of Tempest will be giving us around a 167.5% to 502.5% ability regen upon activation, you don't need to worry so much about boosting your ability regen anymore. Our mod will be providing a small bump here and there, but having Feed the Void, Balance and Hope will help the build out when Crown of Tempest isn't active. This will happen time after time, again, so I tend to play as cautious with my builds as possible. Now, to proc our exotic as much as we can, I have added the Shogun R seasonal mod, which will allow my centrifuge to trigger jolt upon kills. This, with our arc grenades and super, will generally be enough to keep the build going for however long the player can maintain it. Also, having the faster dominance will help with applying that extra level of jolt the build will need. The Fast of Coverage fragment is also helpful for weakening targets, even if it's just a small amount. I was debating switching this for Solitude instead, since we are using an AR, and we will be maximizing Sustained Fire 
and targeting auto-loading seasonal mods. However, with how fast everything dies, I felt this might not be needed overall. This can of course be what you wanted to use instead. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. I have added the Concussive Dampner mod for the reduced AoE splash damage done to us, and the Sustained Fire mod for the increased damage reduction when using our AR. I didn't add faster protection this time, as I wanted to add some more damage to the build. This has worked out fairly well, as the amount of damage we do, and the amount of damage being redacted has been considered to be quite high. I will test this out on your side, but it's worked out pretty well for me. A discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via storm grenades. The storm grenades are being used solely for the fast cooldown and good damage you can apply to groups of enemies. At the same time, it's kind of needed for the overall usage of activating Crown of Tempest effects via Jolt. Now, we do have Shock and Arm seasonal mod, which will of course grant our arc weapons the ability to Jolt, and we also have the Feed the Void for the Devour effect as well. So, you can remove arc grenades if you like, but I believe it's best you go fully in with the tactic. Now, this then brings us to the additional mods which are recommended for buffing our other key stats. Impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff. Momentum transfer times 1 for a 12% melee buff. Bolstering detonation times 1 for a 12% class ability buff. Outreach for a 12% melee buff. And distribution for a 4% all ability buff will cover the key areas of the build. Now for the additional mods, we then have the following. Harmonic Siphon for creating orbs of power via matching subclass weapon type. A special Ammo Finder for increasing the chances of special ammo dropping. Heavy Ammo Finder. Reserves and Scavenger Mod for a heavy weapon. Charged Up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. Arc Weapon Surge times 2 for a 17% arc weapon buff. And Powerful Traction for automatically collecting orbs of power when we use our class ability. As we have covered our exotic primary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build as well. What I recommend are all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our secondary, we have the Silicon, New Aroma, Adept, with Triple Tap and Frenzy. An aggressive frame sniper with a much lower magazine size. The following is great to use against mini bosses in whatever endgame content you use it in. Although you have to be precise with your shots, just so you don't waste how little ammo you have, its hard hitting damage and capability of breaking barrier champs in one shot is going to be handy with quickly dispersing enemies. You'll want to follow what I have as having triple tap will be handy for when you need to deal with a ranged enemy quickly and without needing to reload too much. Heavy, we then have edge transit with fill prep and bane switch. Although mine does not have spike grenades for that extra boost of damage, this is fine as the Bane Switch perk will make up the damage. The two perks are perfect for what we are running with, as we will be going back and forth between our primary and secondary quite a bit. This being the case, I decided to add the BNS weapon to the mix, since it will allow us to quickly get rid of pesky mini bosses or face. This can be gotten from Onslaught game mode, so give that a try. The highlight of the video will be showcasing a game changing build that not only enhances your gameplay, but also surprises the enemies you face. This build takes advantage of the Prismatic Arc Warlock's unique abilities and amplifies them to create a truly unstoppable force on the battlefield. Whether you're taking on a tough PvE encounter or dominating Crucible, this build is sure to turn heads. One of the key components of the build is its ability to adapt to any situation. With the right combination of weapons and armor, you'll be able to switch seamlessly between general low tier PvE loadout to high endgame PvE loadout, all while taking on even the toughest challenges with ease. And with this unique playstyle, you'll be able to catch your opponents off guard and gain the upper hand. This build is also incredibly fun to play with. There's something undeniably satisfying about harnessing the power of Arc and unleashing it on the enemies without needing to use the Arc subclass at all. And with its fast paced gameplay and high octane action, you'll be on the edge of your seat from start to finish. The non-stop arc explosions, blinding, constant jolt, increased damage reduction and damage while firing, and increased ability regen is all excellent for the amount of content you can take this build in. So to wrap this up, we've highlighted the key elements that make the Prismatic Arc Warlock a top choice for Guardians, 
looking to elevate their game this season. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or a new player looking to mix things up, the Prismatic Arc Warlock is definitely worth a second look. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos then leave a like and a sub while you're here. Dim link for the build is located below in the pin section and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.